This is KMTV 3 News Now, live at 6. Authorities have arrested a 67-year-old registered sex offender from Nebraska after the slaying of a UNO student back in 1983. An autopsy report states she bled to death from several stab wounds. 3 News Now Western Iowa reporter Isabella Basco shows us how a cold case got reopened almost 40 years later due to incredible advancements in forensic science. On the evening of August 14, 1983, a Pottawatomie County deputy received a call saying a dead body had been located. A couple located it near this bridge, which is approximately three miles north of Council Bluffs. August 14, 1983 had to be an unthinkable night for Ferze de Hagenpour. Ferze de Hagenpour was an Iranian exchange student studying at UNO when the deputy found her body almost 40 years ago. Several items were located and recovered around her, including a bra, a pair of underwear, a blouse, and notebooks. Over the next several months, several agencies worked together to try to find Feroze's killer. Unfortunately, the case went cold. However, the evidence that was collected in 1983 had been stored and preserved at the Sheriff's Office in case new information ever came to light. In the fall of 2020, the case was reopened. While reviewing the reports, authorities found evidence that could benefit from DNA analysis. In March of this year, we received a DNA hit on Bud Leroy Christensen. Uh, then we, we then focused our investigation on Christensen, and without getting into too many details, we were able to develop more evidence that linked Christensen to her murder. Ultimately, Chief Deputy Jeff Thulin says this case revolves around one question. This really goes back to how do you define justice? Advancements in forensic science have allowed for more insight when it comes to cold cases. Finally, I would like to encourage the family and friends of homicide victims to never give up hope. Seeking the truth that the family and friends of Firze desperately deserve. Let Feroze's case be an example that it is never too late to seek answers. The Pottawatomie County Attorney's Office is looking for any information that you might have about Bud Christensen. Reporting near Council Bluffs, Isabella Basco, 3 News Now. And as Isabella just mentioned, the Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Office is asking that if you have any informa information to share about the case, to please call 712-890-2200. Now, as we learn more about this case, we had questions about the role DNA plays in cold cases. In Iowa, there's only one state crime lab, so people have been asking if that's why it took 34 years to solve. So we talked to UNMC's crime lab director, Dr. Jesse Cox, who told us this has more to do with advancements in science. Back in the early 80s, uh, mid 80s, when they were doing a lot of this testing, uh, the techniques that they were using needed a lot of DNA to actually get a good result. Um, over time, uh, a lot of our molecular techniques have become more and more refined. And so we're using something called polymerase chain reaction or PCR. And so what that does is it can take a really, really small amount of DNA, which couldn't have been used you know, decades ago, and we can now amplify that DNA up you know, going from say one copy up to a trillion copies uh, over the course of a reaction. And so by using these techniques, we can actually amplify the amount of DNA that's there. And so then we can actually start getting useful data basically out of kind of fleetingly small uh, material, uh, you know, sample sizes of material. So a lot of it is just the technical innovation over time, which allows us to go back to a lot of these kind of historical cases. We also asked Dr. Cox more about how the process works in the DNA lab, and we posted the entire interview on our website, 3newsnow.com.